गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम पिनाज कवराना टूडे वील बी लर्निंग अबाउट जोग्राफी चैप्टर नंबर टू पार्ट टू इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट वन वीडियो ऑफ जोग्राफी चैप्टर टू वी लर्न फर्स्टली अबाउट लैंड रिसोर्सेज लैंड वी नो इज अ नेचुरल रिसोर्स इट इज यूज फॉर एग्रीकल्चर फॉरेस्ट्री माइनिंग बिल्डिंग हाउसेज रोड्स इंडस्ट्रीज एंड मैनी सर्च एक्टिविटीज we also saw that how land is land resource is being threatened by the overuse of land like landslides land degradation soil erosion were some of the uh, threatening happenings going around we also learned about some of the conservative steps that we could do to preserve this natural resource that is land such as afforestation land reclamation use of regulated pesticides and fertilizers and checks on overgrazing the next resource that we learned about was soil soil is also a natural resource it is basically a layer of grain granny substance covering earth okay and it is it is very close to the land resource we uh, learned about some different factors of soil formation like the topography the climate the parent rock and so on then uh, we also uh, saw that what are the techniques that could be used in agriculture in cultivation while to protect the soil those were mulching rock dam uh, building intercropping counter plugging and such activities today we'll be learning firstly about water resources water is also a natural resource this is the first uh, page of that chapter from where we are beginning as you can see 3/4 of the earth's surface is covered with water i repeat 3/4 of the total earth's surface is covered with water so most of you might definitely look at the earth as blue in color it is because 3/4 of the earth is covered with water out of this 3/4 2/3 is ocean 2/3 is ocean but the ocean water is saline water and so it is not fit for human con- consumption humans can consume only 2.7% that is fresh water now this 2.7% fresh water is also found in the form of either ice sheets or glaciers and these are mostly found in greenland antarctica and such areas which is very very far away to get uh, to get here for our regular consumption due to such location it is not available thus only 1% of fresh water is available for all of us i repeat the whole thing 3/4 of the earth is covered with water out of that 3/4 2/3 is ocean ocean water is of course not fit for consumption because it is saline salt water all right the remaining 2.7% water fresh water is present out of this 2.7% we have only 1% available for us because the rest is in the form of ice sheet or glaciers in antarctica greenland and these regions are very far away to get the water transported the layer so basically all of us have only 1% of fresh water available for us to consume now this ratio already shows us that we are in such a dearth of a water if we do not use or consume water in the most appropriate way we are near to a future where we will be striving for water though we have been having water all around but still to drink water we will be striving it's found as ground water the first 1% water that is uh, 1% fresh water that is available is found is as ground water surface water in rivers lakes and as vapors in atmosphere okay so this is 
the one person that we are talking about it is the fresh water the fresh water is mostly available in the form of ground water that is below the soil it is also available on the surface uh, in rivers and lakes okay and sometimes in the atmosphere as vapors fresh water is thus most precious because it is the only thing that humans can consume its volume remains constant the quantity of fresh water is always constant it is never going to increase on earth nor can it get decreased it, the abundance only the abundance keeps changing because of the water cycle now you definitely know what is water cycle the falling of rainfall the absorption from the earth and our consumption and then again um, through vapor it goes up to the clouds and then again it falls from the clouds this is the water cycle so because of this water cycle the abundance the quantity changes but the total total volume of fresh water always remains constant humans need water for drinking agriculture production industries generating electricity and many such activities increasing population urbanization standard of living etc leads to shortage of water either due to water pollution or drying up of water resources countries located in climatic zones susceptible to droughts face water scarcity okay so all this is included in the problems of water availability they have said that uh, when the population increases of course the consumption of water is going to increase with this increasing consumption the water might uh, be provided in lesser quantity quantity to the other population urbanization standards of living standard of living includes you brushing your teeth in front of uh, the wash basin for like 15 20 minutes that is your standard of living to utilize water so these are wo- where water availability can be reduced or be a trouble then next is countries that are located in climatic zones that are susceptible to droughts now there are countries which lie in such areas where droughts means scarcity of water is prevailing in such countries or places or climatic zones water scarcity is always and always going to be a problem thus changes in seasonal or annual precipitation over or over exploitation of contamination of water causes scarcity of course water scarcity is something that we cannot afford after all we have just 1% of the fresh water for our consumption so we are ought to take some conservation steps though it's renewable is uh, though it, it's renewable it should be saved discharge of untreated sewage these were the problems discharge of untreated sewage agricultural or industrial chemicals etc are major contaminants to conserve these chemic- chemicals reach human body through water treating them before releasing can be the only solution water harvesting minimize water seepage this is seepage the leaking of water from not just your ceiling but from the soil also by proper canals or using sprinklers this is sprinkler irrigation where uh, not a lot of water is wasted then using drip irrigation where only targeted areas get the water the rest is saved and water is also saved from usage all these steps could be taken for conserving water resource then we have the next resource that is natural vegetation and wildlife this is the page that we'll be learning now natural vegetation and wildlife we all know the importance of plant it gives us provides us with a lot of things like oxygen food medicine clothing material fuel we also know the uses of animals for foods clothes medicine transportation agriculture and many such things 
so basically the natural vegetation and wildlife is very very important for us because we have innumerable uses of this plants and animals under natural vegetation and wildlife now moving on we should start reading plants provide us with various products like silk jute etc that we use our in our daily life natural vegetation and wildlife exist in a biosphere now what is a biosphere it is a zone where the atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere that is soil atmosphere that is atmosphere we all know hydrosphere is the river all this are in close contact to each other the whole of them together becomes the biosphere okay so natural vegetation and wildlife exists in a biosphere in a zone that is in touch with lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere only these places where air water soil all are together in close contact are the only places where vegetation can take place now living organisms in the biosphere like the animals birds are interrelated and interdependent on each other for the survival you know the circle they are all interdependent and interrelated for survival this life supporting system is called the ecosystem vegetation and wildlife are valuable resources plants provide us timber nut shelter oxygen protect soil help store underground water fruits medicines papers etc and what not wildlife provides us with milk wheat wool honey help us as decomposers help in pollination and many more now is the distribution of vegetation growth of vegetation depends on temperature and moisture moisture you can see on this uh, video i have been showing temperature we all understand moisture is this the uh, humid feeling that we have now growth of vegetation you cannot grow a vegetation behind your in the backyard of your house growth of vegetation requires temperature proper temperature and proper moisture major vegetation types are forest grassland tundra and scrubs areas with heavy rainfall attract trees and thus develop forest this is a vegetation forest like short trees and grasses grow in areas with moderate rainfall due to lesser moisture and form a grassland thorny shrubs and scrubs grow in areas with less rainfall forest resource needs to be preserved but it is being cut down to have large areas for growing crops forest resource is being cutting down forest fires conservation of natural resource and wildlife forest is our wealth plants and animals together maintain the ecosystem okay so first of all in the graphics you can see that how forest are being cut down these are the threats to our uh, natural resource that is natural vegetation and wildlife forest fires taking place recently also a for forest fire had taken place tsunamis are also a threat okay to conserve we have uh, to take of the following steps changes in climate and human interference can damage the natural habitat we all know this deforestation soil for erosion forest fire tsunami constructional activities etc factors helps uh, that destroys forest resource forest is our wealth and so plants and animals together maintain the ecosystem and so they should be protected now how to protect them national parks like on your screen some sanctuaries wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves social forestry awareness programs passing laws against killing the animals are always helpful in conservation of these resources because we know that these are very very important for human beings also this is the one mahotsav going on which is also very important and it also promotes awareness 
with this we are done with uh, natural vegetation and wildlife resource and water resource and the whole of the chapter thank you